Originally erected in 1599, using materials from an older theater, the Globe stood on Bankside in Southwark, that is, on the south bank of the Thames River, directly across from St. Paul's Cathedral in central London. The theater burned to the ground in 1613 when its thatch roof was ignited by a 21-gun salute upon the entrance of the king in Shakespeare's Henry VIII. The theater was rebuilt the following year and demolished in 1644. Although Shakespeare had a share in the Globe and acted there as well, the theater was owned primarily by James and Richard Burbage. The theater proper is the circular, open-roof building in the center of this picture. Another popular theater design of the day is represented by this model of the Rose Theater. Where the globe was circular, the rose was square. Where the globe stage protruded from the circumference of the theater, the rose's stage was placed in the center of the theater. The side of the globe was moved to place it nearer the rose, creating a sort of theater district on Bankside. The rose was constructed in 1592. Shakespeare also acted in it. Very few plans and details of the original globe exist today, so the reconstruction of the theater about 100 yards from its original site is largely conjectural. While builders used only materials that would have been available in Shakespeare's day, no one is really sure if all the details of today's building are accurate. In this view, looking south, we see the globe from outside. One of the three entrance doors is visible just behind the lamppost, as is the thatch roof that was the theater's undoing. Today, the Globe is the only building in London that has such a roof. This wide-angle view of the interior of the Globe looks north. The entrance door we saw from the outside is open in this view. On the left side of the picture, we see the stage. Visible ahead, but actually wrapping all around, are the three levels of the theater. In Shakespeare's day, all theater productions were staged during the day since there were no electric lights. The vast majority of theater goers stood on the three tiers, as well as on the floor of the theater. This photograph shows the construction of the theater itself. Made entirely of wood, the tiers burned quickly in 1613. The electric lights visible near the top of this picture were added so that evening productions could be staged. This wide field view of the stage illustrates the static nature of the stage in Shakespeare's day. No curtains came down and only the most minor set changes were possible during the play since everything happened in broad daylight. If a chair is needed for a scene, one of the actors carries it on stage as he enters from the house backstage. You may have noticed this window above the stage in the previous segment. It was used for what we call today special effects. For instance, a cannon is visible so that the battle scenes or salutes, like the one that ignited the roof in 1613, can be heard and felt. This close-up of the stage itself shows interesting but largely conjectural details. Notice that the stage has three levels. Highest up, the roof is painted with the signs of the zodiac, and the stage balcony provides an upper level for action. Together, these often represented the domain of the gods. In the middle, Actually, near the bottom of this image, the stage itself was often used to represent action in the human realm. Finally, a trap door is visible on the stage floor just in front of the giant horsehead statue, which is a prop for the production that was being staged when this photo was taken and is not a permanent feature. Actors rise from or descend into this pit, which often represents the underworld. The stage, like the rest of the theater, is made entirely of wood, the columns are painted to look like marble. Notice also in this image the proximity of the audience to the actors. Audience members stand not only directly in front of the stage, but above and around it as well. The very end of the middle tier is visible in the middle left of this image.